Again, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today. Uh, I've got some remarks prepared that uh, we've been working on. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, uh, I, I'm just kind of overwhelmed with emotion right now to see all of you here. And I'm just so thankful for my family again. My dear mother's here and my wife standing back here with me today, Suzette. So uh, thank you again for being here today. I'm honored to be joined by you and my wife and my family. And as we make this important announcement today for our future. As a husband, grandfather, and father, I'm very concerned about the future of our country and the direction that Washington is trying to take us. I believe it's time we ask ourselves, what type of America is it, is it going on today and what's going, going on in the future? I believe President Trump's policies had us moving in the right direction, and I'm alarmed at the policies that President Biden has changed in the last few months and to, to cut back on some of the successes that we saw with President Trump. America must always, always be a country of law and order. But we have law and order, but we can't have law and order if we don't support the men and women in law enforcement who are trying to do their jobs every day. Give a round of applause for our men and women in, in law enforcement. a country of strong borders, but we can't have strong borders if politicians in Washington refuse to enforce immigration laws. America must be a country where our citizens are confident that our elections are secure, every legal vote counts, and no illegal vote counts. We've got to have that, y'all. We've got to do this. But we cannot have free and fair elections if Washington outlaws common sense ideas like voter ID. It's worked great here in Mississippi. America must be a country where ethics and integrity still matter or else we'll see corruption go out of control. But we can't be a country of ethics and integrity if we turn a blind eye to political favors and politics as usual. America must always be a country where individual rights and constitutional liberties are respected and protected. And the right to life is guaranteed to all people, especially to the unborn. We can't be a country of rights, liberties, and freedoms if we allow politicians to constantly erode and trample on these rights. America must always be a country where success is only limited by imagination, determination, and hard work. But we can't be a country of opportunity and prosperity if our federal government raises our taxes and puts us on a path to socialism. America is not just an area of land, and it's more than just an economy. At its foundation, our country is different from others because America is an idea based on freedom, faith, and the government of laws. It's not enough for me to sit back and watch the decline of our country without trying to do something about it. I've always been willing to step forward and make a difference, and because I've always believed in the concept of service, as these men and women do in law enforcement. That's why I've spent my entire adult life serving as a law enforcement officer of over 40 years. I started out as a jailer on the fourth floor of this courthouse, and I worked my way up to captain at Pascagoula, police chief in Ocean Springs, and I've been your sheriff for the last six years, and I'm very proud to say that I'm thankful to be your sheriff. I thank you for the honor of allowing me to be your sheriff, and I appreciate the confidence that the people have placed in me that, that give me this position that I have and the responsibility that goes with it. I've not taken it for granted, and I've always worked to make you proud. As part of my service as a sheriff, I focused on law and order and also on physical responsibility because that's what the taxpayers deserve. My record as sheriff includes cleaning up corruption, focusing on high standard of ethics, integrity, and personal accountability. By auditing our equipment and spending, we returned over $1 million to the county my first two years in office. And I, I was very proud of that. We returned $2 million my first two years. 
I'm compelled to do everything I can to ensure that our families live in a country that still believes in law and order and individual rights, ethics and integrity, an economy that rewards hard work. It's for all these reasons today that I'm announcing that I'm a Republican candidate for the United States Congress in Mississippi's 4th Congressional District. If we're going to tackle the problems I mentioned earlier, we need someone in Congress with a unique background and first-hand experience of dealing with the most pressing issues facing our country today. When politicians talk about defunding the police and stripping our law enforcement officers of constitutional protections they need to do our job, we need a man in Congress who has a record of standing up and speaking up for men and women of law enforcement and the people that we serve. When politicians talk about amnesty and open borders, we need a congressman who has seen the harmful impact of illegal immigration has on our communities and understands the urgent need for strong border security. When politicians talk about gun control and weakening our rights and freedoms, we need a congressman who will stand up against the criminals because the criminals ignore the gun laws. So law-abiding citizens must have their Second Amendment rights preserved. We've got to protect that Second Amendment right. There are certainly many other issues that we need to talk about today that's going to be addressed in our country. But one of the things that's so important, America faces an ever-changing world. So we must always sir, make sure our military is prepared and equipped to handle any threat of terrorism at home and abroad. We can't let our guard down in our fight against terrorism and our way of life. I don't want my way of life changed in South Mississippi. And we can never forget our veterans and the sacrifice that they've made to protect our freedom. Our military and veterans deserve our support and gratitude. And America faces the current and future challenge of the pandemic with an economy that must be jump-started by free enterprise, not overburdensome regulations by Washington. Our country can't tax its way into prosperity so the tax raises in Washington must be met head on. Despite our challenges, I am very confident in our future. America remains the leader of the free world. As Ronald Reagan said, a city on a hill, a shining city. We have the strongest military, the wealthiest economy, and the Constitution that has guaranteed our freedoms for over 100, 230 years. But freedom and strength did not happen by accident. It has been fought for, protected by generations that have come before us. I am running for Congress because I believe in the American way of life. And my experience in law enforcement as a Jackson County Sheriff has prepared me to go to Washington and to fight back against those who seek to radically change our great country. I look forward to meeting as many of my fellow citizens of the 4th Congressional District, as many as I can, as soon as possible during the course of this campaign, and I hope to earn your vote. Thank you again for coming out today. God bless you, and God bless America.